Hello and welcome to all Greyhound Stadium where tonight we have the final at the Red Mills Southern Sprint. I'm also joined here by two members of the original Track Supporters Club. So Bertie, can you tell us when the track was first founded? The track was founded in 1948. A group of local people, some of them were businessmen, they didn't have much interest in Greyhounds, but they pulled in and they bought their leased this land here now. And um, they leased it for 140. 140 pounds a year, um, which was grand. It was probably the value of it at the time, but it was a 50-year lease, and when the lease came to be renewed, it went from um, 140 to 20,000. <laughs> it was a big jump, but that was the way money had been devalued. Um, the track went through a lot of ups and downs, probably more downs than ups, but... Um, the original directors handed over to an, another group. People, they're all dead now, I think, like Eamon Sweeney, um, who, who else? John Spillane. John Spillane. Yeah. Abernettis. Tommy O'Connor, he's still alive. They went to fairs and maths and cajoled people to buy shares at £10 to keep the place going and Eventually, bought and gone to Grover, and they bought it for what the share value of the place was. I was um, probably about the early 60s, and we were pretty secure from then on. This stand was, where it now was built in 71, but it was built as a viewing stand, and it was subsequently changed into a bar, as, as it is now. And um, when Borden gone to Grover, it was reasonably secure, and we've had a lot of support locally over the years. And the supporters club, um, we started the first supporters club in the country here back about 1990. And they played a big part in keeping the show going. Down through the years, some famous dogs have came from the all tracks. So, Michael, can you tell us some of the dogs? Well, I suppose going back to the 60s, I suppose the most famous, in, from a breeding point of view, would have been Skipping Chick. And a lot of our progeny uh, turned out to be Category 1 uh, plastic winners in the UK. Going back, even currently, if you go back and through most of the dam lines, even the Dumfries, Droopies lines now would be going right back to the Skipping Chicks. In latter years, I'd say recently, Taylor Sky, who was the English Derby winner, runner-up again this year, started his career actually on this corresponding night in Europe when he won the unrace stake here. Um, Tim, he was also Dog of the Year. Tim Scrow, who trialled in Yall, turned out to be Dog of the Year. January Tiger, Category 1. Um, you had the great boot bitch again who came from out the road, Stevie Mother with Travelling Light. Uh, <coughs> she bred a dog called Men of Cash, who was third in the English Derby. Bought of Light, who turned out to be a superb dog. Um, you had January Tiger, Category 1, Walsham Stout. You had um, a dog called Roswell Star Trek, who Pat Maloney down the road. Um, his breeding came to the fore again when, when Knockless King won the Laurels in Cork recently, Red Mill sponsored Laurels. You had Fats by um, who won the Comerford Puppy Classic. You had a host of dogs, Bertie, I suppose, really, had you gone down through the... Fire, fire height then would have been another one. Um, Kille, um, Ag Ag Aglish Poacher. Well, well, his champion who won his first race here, won the... Um, Big puppy classic in, in, in Nottingham. Um, you had, um, what else would you had uh, Ronnie's champion? You had. Um, yeah, Ronnie's champion, of course, um, most of the Jangri dogs. There was a couple of very good Jangri dogs, wasn't there? Jangri. Well, um, I remember skipping Chick's first litter. She bred the, the Lalas winner. Right, yeah. And to Burgess, remember Burgess Heather? And Kilcannon Bullet, who was an English Derby, uh, third in English Derby. So, like, you all have traditionally done through the years, there's been a great history of, of young talent coming through. It's a reasonably tough track. Uh, bends are reasonably tight, so it means that they can handle most of the English tracks. Particularly the, the current English tracks are quite tight because they don't have a lot of space. So dogs that come out of you all will generally, as a rule, do well in England. Also, we've been lucky that um, a well-known celebrity, George Holland, has purchased dogs out of you all and they've turned out very well for him. And uh, One of the most famous dogs they had was a dog called Witches Dean who was bred by the Toomey family, Johnny Toomey, God be good from him. He, um, he turned out a tremendous dog. Kate Moss was also a shareholder in Witches Dean. So, like, there's been um, a guy called Michael White, who was a top producer in the West End, um, was also a shareholder. So there's been a good, a good tradition, and, and um, dogs generally that run y'all will, will run well.
me to move out here. Drude's Pedro was another one. Um, Colin Strickland, yeah. Colin Strickland brought him out of y'all. Drude's Jana was another dog. He was beaten. He was owned by the um, Bright in England, wasn't That's he? Right. Uh, yeah, he ran up in English Derby as well. <coughs> Danny, a new bed, bred Fat Boys Tyson. I bred, uh, he was known then as Lefanta Glenaru, and he, won, he ran his first race in Yall, and he won it. And then we went on to Shelburne, I think it was a tri stake, and he won that. And we sold him after then, and he went to the Fat Boys Syndicate. So, Bertie, can you tell us what you think is going to win the Redmond Southern Sprint? Yeah, I think uh, Granny Boots will win tonight. Uh, he's un- unbeaten in the stakes so far, and um, I-, I think he's the one they all have to beat. And you, Michael? Well, I don't always agree with Bertie, but on this occasion I will. I think he's the nap of the night. Um, while he was an unrace dog, I tried to buy him, but the lads that owned him wouldn't sell. And I've watched him closely, I've seen him in trials, and I rate him very, very highly. I think he's a class above the field tonight. I can't see him being beaten. And Johnny, your Redmonds are sponsoring the Southern Sprint. Ha- so what do you think is going to win? Um, it's, I think the, the one dog is well host. Um, the two dog, I think, has a chance. Sprint, it's, for, it's difficult for the sprint. But as the lad said already there, the four dog is a class dog. Like He's a very pacey dog. And if he hits the lids, I think he'll take a lot of beating. He definitely was unbeaten throughout the stake and definitely showed his class there again tonight. Yeah, he's he's a tremendous dog. Like he's ultra genuine. Just when he hits, like mightn't trap great every night, but when he does hit it, or when he does, once he hits the ground, he's extraordinarily paced. Like maybe a small bit wide, but geez, he's a great great dog. And he's young. He won't be too till January. So we're thrilled with him. Absolutely thrilled with him. So that's you know we're just. Any ideas, future plans, or? 
Oh, yep. we'll give him a break now for a small bit. I suppose a badly needed break from him, and we'll see in January. We'll we'll probably have to travel with him. All right, there's a few stakes we're probably eyeing up. All right, so hopefully, like I'll just talk to the owners, David and Aidan, but there should be no bother. We'll we'll decide in January, but we'll give him a couple of weeks off now. But uh, no, it is great because last year, like uh, we were second and third here last year in the final, so it is great to actually win one. Uh, my father's not here tonight, and he's he's a huge part to play in this, and. Uh, so he'd be thrilled when I phone him there in a minute. So uh, this one's for him then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dad, he'd be thrilled. He's racing Cork, so so it is. Um, it is a family business, and we're delighted to be able to win in a local a local track. And hopefully, no, please God, that January will prove good again for us, and Granny Boots might do a bit more for us. I'm here with Aidan Lombard, one of the co-owners here of Granny Boots. So David, uh, he ran a great race there for you tonight. Oh yeah, no, we're delighted with him. He. Uh, well, so he broke. We thought we'd, he'd win, you know, and he did. So, um, and he won the, the semi final last week and the quarter final. So, uh, no, we were we said if he'd break, he'd win, and, and he broke. So, uh, delighted. And Davis not here tonight? No, Dave lives in England, but uh, um, he's on the phone. He's probably ringing every second, you know. But, uh, yeah, no, he's delighted. So, it was great. But and can you tell us how you got the dog? Yeah, we bought him off, um, off Mark. Drynan, um at three or four months old, you know. So we bought him on a Sunday morning, a little shook, and uh, we've had good luck since. So, no, oh, good fun, good fun. Away in a racing in the fifth of the favour comes away well. Three, four, John Pace the bend. That's Carnell, but three up the inside. That's Rising Bravely. Unbeaten from the first two rounds and goes around the couple clear. Owned by uh, David Fleming and all Fleming Rising Bravely. Half brother to a winner here in the past. He's on Lincoln half here. Four, normally a strong finish of Carnell. Two on the outside. Burgess Expert is also showing pace. Normally a big kick in the, up the straight, but it's still number three. About two or three here. Four is going to challenge on the inside. Two will be coming eight on the outside. One is also finishing on the inside. We're up for a training finish. Three there. There he was. Absolutely flies on the outside. Three, four, four. Very tight. Oh! Now he's been improving throughout the stake and flew home there tonight. Oh, he did, yeah. He came from an awful long ways back. Um, I was surprised he missed the break um, completely, um, but he tends to do that. He's only been in the box, we'd say, five or six times. He's a, he's a very novice pup, but um, he comes home. He comes home well, and as you can see, he was um, he found the line at the, at the right time. And um, what I can see is that he was even driving on from the line. I was delighted with that. Have you any future plans for him? Uh, well, I suppose we can always say tonight was the plan, but um, I'd be hoping that he stays sound. And um, listen, this is only his third race, and I hope that he, he's from the Bohut of Light um, line. Uh, the flight. Uh, that family was bred by Stevie Mulway, another local uh, supporter here, and I'd be hoping that if he's only half as good as that dog, we'd have a bit of fun out of him. For Willie Mack, five down Bower Tiger, six is a Wosey. Way of racing in the eighth, and the three level race four, so nice pace to bend. That's Willie Mack, two on the inside. That's Cabby Maddie, John Pace, and he's going to lead around along the inside from four and one. But it is two, Cabby Maddie, be challenged on the outside by four and six. One tucked in behind him on a couple of lengths down, normally a strong stair. But it is number two out in front. That's Cabby Maddie, two. One is about to move into second place. Still about three lengths to make up on the, on the leader, that's Cabby Maddie. He leads by about two or three lengths. One is making ground on the inside, only about a length and a half between them as they turn for home. One is strong, or two is strong in front. One is finishing, three is finishing fast. I thought about tap number two, Cabby Maddie, following a couple of lengths. One last week and definitely improved on time this week. Yeah, he did. Great, we're delighted. Yeah. And any future plans for the dog? Or? Hopefully I'll sell him. Something coming along with a lot of money now and I'll, that's it. Gone. <laughs> and did you breed him yourself or did you buy no, him? I bought him off a friend of mine. Yeah, Martin Corn. So... Friend. I'm here at Paddy Welch, chairman of the Track Supporters Club. So Paddy, so how many members are involved in the Track Supporters Club? 
Well, we, uh, actively we have about 15 or 16 committee members, but ideally, like, with the whole track, it gets involved, like, at meetings or whatever else, like, you know, and we designate different jobs to different people. Like, we came now all the summer, we had a very good response here. We, we painted and cleaned the whole place up, and it looks very well, like, and now we're being delighted with our new new development tonight, and it's up and running, and we're delighted. And how many sponsors would you have for the track sports? Uh, we have a very good few sponsors. Like, what we kind of basically do is we each track supporter goes away and tries and get as many sponsors as we like. Like, so I suppose we had about 20 or 30 this year like, and then we've put a pile of money of our own track supporters money into stakes just to kind of make up the different, the different you know, heights of it like, so I mean it's, so we can make the stakes like, fairly valuable like, I think the stakes we have here like, are as good as anywhere in the country you know, so I mean that's, that's the thing like, if we get a sponsor for three or four hundred well then the track supporters put a few bob with it like, and we make it a decent stake you know. We have free entry here for July and August yeah, we, we sponsored one night ourselves the track supporters and Kearney Catering, our new catering people sponsored the second night so it has worked very well down to the years like it has been supported by Cashman's used to it back through the years but you know just things change from time to time like but we're hopefully now this year I think we got one actually Friday night during the summer where we had actually a fine evening I think it rained nearly every Friday night for the summer like so unfortunately like, we get a lot of holiday home people here like and they love to come to the dogs and the great entertainment like so we hope now this year with the new development like that we'll be able to bring a few more people in like so I'm a six rising flyer Away and racing right in the night on wood, comes away well, moves away, moves away, middle of the early, gets a bit of a bump, it's three shot night, early pace, that's sunny money six, and the outside is rising fire, there's all sorts of trouble in behind, but it's number three, now to be shunned on the outside by six, rising fire, rising fire is strong stair from this point three, just lead down to half way, but six is now the head of the outside, three stunning buddy on the inside, six rising fire and a search into the third end goes two or three clear. This looks like it's all over, six rising fire leads into the home train, gonna win impressively in the end, four or five, front three in second, one is staying on late, but it's all about number six, rising fire is the winner for Damien and all time. A bit of luck here, you're on in the unraised final, eighth compensation here with rising fire, second is number three, stunning buddy, third number one, Burgess Special. I'm here with Noel Fleming, winner of the Track Supporters A2525 final. Noel, a bit of consolation after losing your own final there earlier on the card. Ah, sure, you know, it was great. First of all, that uh, poor old friar at four and a half years old won the A2 stake. Uh, this night, two years, he, he, he was in the final of the unraced um, with, 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 with his um, half brother. Um, Rising Hawk at the time, who turned out who we sold, who won it actually, and this would have been third in the final. We sold him then, and he went on to win the English Derby. So here we are, two years afterwards, and this poor old lad came back and winning day two tonight in 2906 is a great run, like for a for a real veteran. And he's out again Sunday night. No rest for him. He's out again Glenville Sunday night. No rest for an old man like himself. No indeed. No indeed. And, and Taylor Sky is coming back now to Ireland to stand his stud career. That's right. That's right. He ran his last race on Wednesday night to Sean and Sky. He was second to Sapit Sensation, actually. Ran a great race. Uh, Sapit had to break the record to beat him, as you might have seen. Uh, he was beaten a length and a half, but uh, I think he's coming out to Sean Burke. He'll be going to stud now at this stage, you know. No, well, this is your third year sponsoring for the ra Rising Unraced. That's right, that's right, yeah, yeah. It used to be sponsored in the old days by Dermot Coffey, the bookmaker, when he was here. And then after that, um, Tony, Brennan, Tony Brennan's family from um, Castle Martyr, they did it for a few years. So then three years ago, they had no sponsors, so they asked us to, uh, to do it. So we willingly did, and uh, we won it ourselves the first year with uh, Rising Hawk. And this, uh, as I say, Rising Fry was third in it. Uh, last year was our second year, and then tonight was our third year. Um, OK, we were beaten a short head by um, Kenny Foley's dog, Crumpa and Jamesy, but look, the foot that dog shot from the second bin, he was only about fourth down the back, and uh, he got up on the line, and uh, he's only a young dog, and all we can say is wish him the best for the future. We had great sponsorship with Red Mills, they're a long-term sponsor here on the track. They're, they formerly did the champion stakes, they're, in the, they're involved here with the Southern Sprint with a lot of years. We've managed to keep the, the status of the Southern Sprint up well up with the good sponsorship and uh, we had a great great quality of fields running in this year's competition. Leave you Dave was probably a little bit unlucky to go out but we had a great winner with Granny Boots to super run. Um, I'd like to compliment the, our sponsors and I thank the track supporters they gave us great help there recently we, we refurbished the track they've done an awful lot of work and put a lot of sponsorship into the stadium and we're, I'm delighted to, to, that the night went well for our sponsors for the track supporters and for everyone y'all yeah